If you find yourself in need of an armored vehicle, you have come to the right video. I'm your host, Pubo Rama, and in today's video, I'll be going over the top five best armored vehicles in Grand Theft Auto V Online. So let's get straight into it. The first category we are gonna be talking about is bulletproof protection. If you're doing a simple mission, let's say Titan of a job, you don't wanna be shot in the forehead and squirt ketchup all over your brand new car's interior, these are some of the best cars you can pick. Now there is a bit of a difference between these two over here, the Sterling GT, the Armored Karuma, and then the semi-bulletproof windowed Shafter V12. If you're gonna do missions, a car like the Shafter V12 is not a great pick when it comes to bulletproof protection. Because, sure, the windows are slightly bulletproof. You can see none of those bullets went through. But, you'll notice once this window shatters that if you keep shooting, yeah, eventually your rounds will cut straight through the window. Now, it is pretty impressive. I mean, a heavy sniper still does not cut through the window at all. So, if you're in an online lobby and you're just trying to escape players, the Shafter V12 armored or any of the armored variant cars, especially the Amani Tech vehicles with the semi-bulletproof windows are great because not only do you carry some bulletproof protection as you can see, but as well, this vehicle can survive one explosion, which makes it way better than the other two we're going to be talking about. Now, I do want to point out that while these windows are semi-bulletproof, that is only against normal rounds, armor-piercing rounds, or minigun rounds are going to cut straight through the car's windows, so that is one thing to keep in mind. When it comes to the Armored Karuma and the Sterling GT, these are by far the best picks you can make when it comes to armored vehicles. Personally, I would suggest to get the Armored Karuma, and the only reason behind that is because the Sterling GT is currently bugged. You'll notice I can just keep shooting at this car. It doesn't matter what I do. I can shoot at the side. I can shoot at the back. These windows do not break. I can pull out a minigun. It doesn't matter what you do. Sure, the minigun might blow up the car as this is just a normal car, but you cannot damage the driver. Because of that, the Sterling GT is currently the best armored vehicle in the game when it comes to bulletproof protection. In fact, you're going to notice here, my character is going to do the breaking window animation, but doesn't break the window. So my character thinks the window is broken, but I can still shoot right out of it. That means if you're in a police chase, you have zero chance of being shot. In fact, me and my friends are doing the Pacific Standard Heist trying to get the Criminal Mastermind Challenge, and this is the car we're using for a lot of the setups because you just can't take any damage. It is pretty insane. The Armored Karuma you can take damage in. There is a slight slit that is like at this angle right here that you can be shot through in the head. Also in the back of the window, there's certain angles. I don't think you're actually supposed to be shot through them, but maybe it's just a bit of a bug. Either way, you can be shot through the windows of the Armored Karuma. This is gonna sound weird, but the Armored Karuma is a better buy. Even though it is currently not as armored as the Sterling GT, it will be because it's a bug that is currently causing the Sterling to be bulletproof, and Rockstar most likely in the next update or patch will fix it, and if you bought the Sterling thinking that you're bulletproof and invincible, you're going to find out very quickly once it gets patched that you're not, and then you've got a $1.8 million car running away in your garage. So I would highly suggest if you're going to go for a bulletproof car, go for the Armored Karuma. But there is still one major problem with the Armored Karuma, and that is explosion resistance. As you just saw, it survives zero explosions, and that is why it is sitting in fifth place. This is an armored vehicle list, and as an armored vehicle, it should be able to survive some sort of explosion, which in fourth place we do have being the Shafter V12. Now, the main reason why I'm including the Shafter in today's video is down to the fact that I want to have some sort of cheap car that everybody can afford. The Shafter V12 costs $300,000 to get the armored variant. Not only do you get semi-bulletproof windows, as we talked about, but as well, this is an incredibly fast car. It has a top speed of 124 miles per hour, and it's actually the fastest sedan in lap time. Now, I don't think really anybody does sedan racing, but it still proves a point that this is actually a very mobile and enjoyable car to drive as it is. I drive this car myself a lot on my account, and heck, I've got $700 million on this account. It's just a a really fun car to drive and you also have that little bit of security that if somebody does try to blow you up or chase you you're fast enough and you have enough protection in all the areas to survive most of what's thrown at you because I also forgot to mention that this vehicle can survive one explosion the second one will blow it up but I usually find one explosion is enough if somebody's trying to throw a sticky bomb at you or anything like that overall the Shafter V12 for the price tag is a fantastic deal I would definitely suggest to buy it 
Into third place, we're taking away that bullet protection and putting on missile protection. This is the Insurgent Pickup Custom. Able to survive 26 missiles, the 27th blowing it up. But unfortunately, you'll notice that the armor plating, even though you'd think it actually works like armor plates, it doesn't. You can actually shoot directly through it. You're going to notice that when we get inside of the Insurgent in just a moment, the bullet holes are actually going to be above the armor plating, right where my head is as well. So, uh, yeah, Rockstar, I don't even know why you put an armor plating addition to this vehicle. It's not only a waste of money, but as well, it literally takes away the ability to shoot and throw sticky bombs. So, please don't buy the armor plating up upgrade if you do get your hands on the Insurgent. But what makes this vehicle so strong is, as we talked about, 26 missiles is great. That means a Deluxo or an Oppressor, Oppressor Mark II, does not have the ability to kill you with an entire vehicle of ammunition, so they gotta respawn it and then start shooting at you again. And that's great, because that means it gives you a lot of time to get away, especially because this vehicle is not slow either, going at a top speed of 100 miles per hour. But the best part about the Insurgent Pickup Custom is its defense capabilities. Not only can you drop proximity mines, which literally blows everything up behind you, so if there is somebody trying to chase you on foot, yeah, they're not going to get very far. But as well, you do have a minigun, which if you have a friend, they can help you and absolutely decimate anything that is near you. The Insurgent Pickup Custom is honestly a great vehicle, but I usually say that it's a lot better if you have friends to support you, because our second place option is... The Night Shark. This vehicle is not only cheaper than the Insurgent Pickup Custom, but it's faster and, in my opinion, actually more armored. Now, the sides you'll notice, the armor plating is absolutely bogus. It does nothing. However, on the front of the vehicle, the armor plating actually works. You'll see there's sparks coming out of the armor plates when you shoot it. So that's actually really good, and it means that, at least frontally, you have a lot more protection than the Insurgent Pickup Custom does. This vehicle is basically like you take away the proximity mines, you take away the machine gun on the roof to gain a faster, more stripped-down version of the Insurgent Pickup Custom. The reason I like the Night Shark more is a couple reasons. First of all, as I said, it's cheaper. You don't need to put this vehicle into an MOC to upgrade it, which saves you a lot of money. As well, the Night Shark is way faster, and it survives the exact same amount of explosions at 26. When you add all those together, I personally just see the Night Shark kind of as a better Insurgent Pickup Custom. Like, sure, if you got a lot of friends to meme around and use the proximity mines and help you out with the minigun, then I can see why the Insurgent Pickup Custom can be a better option. But if you're a solo player trying to get from point A to point B, this vehicle is not only going to get you there faster, but you're going to have more frontal protection against anybody on the ground, and yeah, I mean, it's cheaper, so why not? As an honorable mention, we have the APC. The reason why this isn't actually in the list is because I wouldn't necessarily suggest to buy it. It's a really cool vehicle. It's basically like a tank, but the reason I don't have the tank and the APC really on this list is down to the fact that, sure, they are really defensive vehicles, but any flying oppressor can absolutely demolish this thing. The tank and the APC can both be blown up within 10 homing rockets, which makes me question why drive one of these vehicles when I I can just drive an Insurgent Pickup Custom or a Night Shark. Now, the reason the APC is really cool is down to the fact that it can actually drive in the water, float, swim around. Also, the fact that it does have a fully operational tank cannon. It can place sticky bombs on the ground. I mean, it's a really cool vehicle, plus it's not that slow for a very heavily armored vehicle going at 63 miles per hour. It's just not really worth the price, and for how much defensive capabilities it has, as I said, I think that you can still do better off. The whole point of an armored vehicle in my eyes is a car that you'll either pull out when somebody is harassing you, trying to blow you up, or when you're trying to do something without being killed and getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. Obviously, you're not going to pull out a tank, you're not going to pull out an APC for that, but for our first place position, you will be pulling out that car, which is any of the Imani Tech vehicles I personally find, but I think the Buffalo SDX is the best out of the bunch. The Buffalo is incredibly fast, having a top speed of 100 126 miles per hour. And as you'll notice right here, just like the Shafter V12, it carries semi-bulletproof windows. Now, that's not the best. Obviously, we've talked about there are better protection that you can get on the windows, like the Armored Karima or the Sterling GT, 
but the main advantage for this vehicle is the fact that it can tank up to 12 homing rockets before it finally explodes. 12! And, not to mention with the Imani Tech upgrade, you can turn off homing rocket capabilities. So not only is this car incredibly fast, not only does it have bulletproof window protection, but you're never gonna kill it. I mean, if you can hit 12 homing missiles without actually being able to home on the car, I will be thoroughly impressed. Because of that, I see the Buffalo STX, in my opinion, as the most armored vehicle because you can't really take it out. Sure, if you're sitting on ground, you can blow it up if you shoot it enough times, but if you're trying to get from point A to point B, this is by far one of the most efficient vehicles. Now, as I said, a lot of the Imani Tech vehicles are just as good in my opinion. If you don't want to get the Buffalo and you want to get the Champion, which is the supercar variant, basically the same as this car, I think that's just as good as of a choice. I just think the Buffalo is the best because it's cheaper, it's got a really good top speed of 126, which actually makes it one of the fastest muscle cars in the game. It looks really nice, plus it has all of that protection capability. Either way, let me know in the comments down below what you think about today's video. I really wanted to make something that had a lot of diversity. We have some really chunky big armored vehicles like the Night Shark, the Insurgent Pickup Custom, then we got a cheap vehicle like the Shafter V12, we've got the bulletproof vehicles, and then in first place we got a combination of all of them. We got a vehicle that can tank a lot of missiles, a vehicle that has some bulletproof protection, and the ability to not even be homed on. I just think that this is personally the most armored vehicle you can get. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below, and let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.